Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now let me just say, this video was not planned whatsoever. Originally I was going to be making a dinosaur video, but I was talking with my friend Fairies and Fancies. Um, she, just plugging her real quick, she makes adorable little fairy flocks, so please go follow her on Instagram and go buy her stuff because she's adorable and I love her. But we were talking um, and she purchased uh, something called an owl bear from another artist called Miss Monster, who is also another <laughs> another plug. Please go follow them too. They are very, very, very talented. <laughs> so I saw that and I was like, owl bear, what is that? I want it. And so I was like, I need to make this. I need to make this right now. And I looked up owl bear, and it was like it's a D and D creature from what I know, and it's just like a it's like honk hunk of a beast and it's like a really big bear mixed with an owl but then but then I looked up baby owl bear and that gave me results like this and I was like well I gotta make that yesterday so that's what we're gonna be working on this was totally not planned you'll just have to indulge me I know it's not really like a request or anything and like no one thought about an owl bear but somehow we're here what we're going to be doing. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, and the first step into starting the owl bear is to sculpt the head and feet of this creature. Now, uh, for the head, I will be doing 3D sculpting. It is a tool I just want to learn more and more about as I continue to use it. I really enjoy 3D sculpting. Now, uh, it is a little bit intimidating, and there's still like a bunch of stuff that I do not know. I'm just kind of winging it out here. It's the go for it method out here, folks. <laughs> but I just, I want to use it more, and I hope that's okay with you guys, because I know it's not traditional sculpting. I know it's not uh, accessible to everybody. Uh, 3D sculpting is, because there's a free program called Blender. Um, you can do 3D sculpting with that, but to print out like a physical piece with your 3d printer that's not always as accessible to everyone and so i understand that it's this is more of just a watch for entertainment than rather learn from which i hope that's okay i do still want to do normal sculpting just so i can teach you guys for one and two i'm always going to love traditional that's that's where i started i love the feeling of clay and just making things with my hands, that's that's never going to change. But I do also recognize the fact that 3D sculpting will make my life a little bit easier, especially when it comes to just getting concepts down, getting things symmetrical, and getting like a, a faster workflow, especially since I'm a business, and I can get more detail in because I can really zoom in and because like I mentioned every video, <laughs> me and like sculpting small detail that just I can't do it. I can't sculpt small. <laughs> so the fact that this can help me get the small details that I usually can't get and that I can 3D print it in any size I want. So I can make a gigantic one or I can make an itty 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 bitty one. It's just, it's really beneficial for me. And so I hope you guys are okay with seeing it more and more because... There probably will be more and more videos of it, but I'll make sure to always, you know, go back to my roots and do some traditional sculpting here and there. Um, I also want to mention <sighs> birds, man. They're just, they're not my friends when sculpting. I'm really pleasantly surprised with how this one turned out. And you know why it turned out so well? That is because, say it with me guys, say it with me, references people, references. I use so many references for this bird. It, it birds horses and deer and cats i just can't they're just they're foreign to me i can't sculpt them very well so you best believe that i was using references for these folks and i just i will always drive home using references there's just literally no downside and i'm not just talking about like anatomical references you need the skeletal and muscle anatomy of the animal you're drawing or sculpting no no i just mean also like inspiration photos if you find artworks that you really like and people that inspire you just save those images for later if you're like oh i really like this style or i really like this color palette or i really like how they did this save those images for later and use them as a reference for when you're making your own artwork it'll just help you take it to a whole nother level that you didn't think that you could do even if you're like really really talented always always still use references because it'll just bump you up that much more I, there's just no downside so i'm always going to drive it home to you guys references people references 
I also want to mention that this footage that you're looking at right now is the more realistic style owl because I did up making two versions. The first one um, I have an idea for uh, where it's like a creepy owl character. It looks really cool on my head so I preemptively sculpted that and then I went back in and then kind of made a cute version where I stylized it. I made like I moved the beak up and I made the eyes a little bit more big and more stylized and cutesy but unfortunately I don't have that part of the footage because I wasn't sure if I was even going to make a video. I sculpted this a while ago and part of me was like you don't gotta film it. You don't gotta record it. You're not gonna make a video off of this. I don't even like birds that much. But the other part was me just do it to cover your bases just in case. And now I'm glad I did because look at me now. I'm making owl videos. <laughs> so that's just to give you a heads up on that. And here is a 3D printed piece. Now, as some of you guys have been asking what printer I use, I use a Anycubic Photon Mono X printer. It is a resin printer, and so um, you guys gotta be careful if you're using it. You know, make sure you're wearing your gloves and stuff to keep yourself safe. But it is a great printer to have because it just gets so much detail. Um, there is a little nick that you see in the print. That's my fault. I don't think I supported it correctly, but I can just fix that very easily with um, epoxy, which we will be using later on. Um, you'll notice that it's a flat bag. There's n nowhere for me to attach an armature, so I have to make a hole. And for that, I am using a Dremel, and I'm just slowly... Great, great footage. My fingers just cover everything, but I, <laughs> I am just slowly using my Dremel to make a big enough hole to insert um, ball and sockets into just making sure that it's deep enough that I can at least fit like one to two segments of the ball and sockets that's usually my sweet spot because um, then I feel like that's really nice and secure and it's not going to go anywhere so um, that's what you see me doing here. And to attach the armature to the head I am just filling that cavity I dremeled and I'm filling it with high heat hot glue and I'm just inserting the armature into that and the, the reason I want to make sure that I have at least two segments in there is because the hot glue is going to um, harden around those segments and it's going to make it so that you can't pull it out which is really great for longevity I just I love hot glue I know people like wrap on it wrap on it oh god <laughs> it's so stupid <laughs> so what I I'm pretty much trying to say is I know it gets a bad rap but um, if you're getting like industrial hot glue that stuff is just really really good sometimes too good because if I don't put it in the right spot and where I need it I need to try to remove it oh my god it's so so difficult sometimes so just if you're getting the right hot glue you can it's very versatile and I highly recommend it for things especially attaching armatures to uh, your clay pieces that that's pretty much only how I do it Now to make the feet, I am going to be using Instamorph, but this is when the footage starts to get a little janky and I'm not in frame whatsoever, so I apologize about that. <laughs> but I am using Instamorph, which are these plastic pellets that you put in really, really hot water and then they'll melt and become like a multiple plastic. And once they cool, they turn back into a very hard plastic in whatever shape you put them in. So they are also a very versatile thing. The only thing is that they don't get quite as much detail, not nearly as much as like Say epoxy could get but just for little things like making toes and little feet or, or little details like horns or claws they're perfect for I do wish I went a little bit more bear style with his feet uh, they look more cat like in my opinion and I also thought about making them like kind of chunky like a bear would but because everything else was going to be chunky I wanted his feet to be like abnormally small which I thought just gave like a really cute pitter patter result and I, I just I loved it so much but um, I think going forward since this was a prototype uh, I think I might make it more bear like we'll see we'll see what happens and once everything is attached to the armature it is now time to build up his body and for that I will be using quilt batting now you can find this in it comes in like these really big rolls because it's meant for quilts and I just cut it into strips and just wrap it around the armature over and over and over again until the body is built up to how I want. Now something I always want to mention is when you're doing this step you want to make sure that you're not building up his body 
quite as much as you actually want the end result to be because whatever fabric you're going to use is going to add additional thickness on top of that. So that's something you want to keep in mind, especially for faux fur. Faux fur is going to add a lot of thickness. So <laughs> that's definitely something to keep in mind. But like I always say, if you want to go and you want to go get Chunk 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 Boy, you go and you get Chunk 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 Boy. If you want to go get Thin 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 Boy, you go in ahead and you go get Thin 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 Boy. Okay, we support all body shapes and sizes here. And let me tell you, for this one, oh, I was going for Chunk. I wanted a Chunky Bean and I got a Chunky Bean. Let me tell you, he's the chunkiest thing I've ever made and I absolutely love it. <laughs> I need to make more Chunk 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 stuff because normally I go for Thin Lanky, but no, we need, we need to support the Chunks here. Okay, so here's the Chunk. <laughs> Uh, I also apologize here uh, throughout this uh, quilt batting process, the camera angles are just, mm, 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 mm. I, I, it looks like I've never filmed a video <laughs> before, that's how bad the camera angles are, but that shows you how like into this art doll I was, because if I'm really into an art doll, I start off in frame and then I just slowly bring it closer to my face as I pay attention and focus on what I'm doing and then next thing I know it's like an inch from my face and then I'm like oh I'm not even on the table anymore that's unfortunate <laughs> um so I'm so sorry I even try to like put little markers like I'll use sculpting tools as markers for like keep everything in frame but it doesn't matter because if I get too in the zone and I'm vibing out to my music next thing I know it's in front of my face and the camera's on the corner like hello do I even matter to you <laughs> so I'm sorry that this video is uh, angles are just kind of all over the place. Please forgive me. tutorial daily reminder even though it's not really daily because I only upload every two weeks but daily reminder that if you've been thinking about an art project if you've had any kind of project it doesn't even have to be art related just on your mind but you're looking at it and you're going like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that looks way too difficult I couldn't do that mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't even know where to start I don't have the materials for that I, how do I even start I don't even know what to do that just looks way too intimidating no that's a no for me hey mm -hmm. Silence all that, okay? You look at me. You look at me, okay? Are you looking at me? No, like, actually look at me. Actually, okay? You can do the thing, okay? You have the power to do whatever it is you want. Literally anything you want. You can, okay? Just one step at a time. Take it one step at a time. If you've been thinking about doing an art doll and you're just like, no, can't do it, can't do it. Start, just plan what you want to make. Start with that. And then move on to what materials you need to get. And if you need to raise money for that, if you're young and you need to like, ask to do chores around the house or something to get money for that. If you've been looking at the dishes and you're like, hmm, I let them dishes pile up too much, man. <laughs> One dish at a time. You even do like a, just a few dishes. You'll, you'll be amazed at how accomplished you feel, okay? So I'm telling you, I believe in you, okay? You can go do the thing, all right? All right? I love you, okay? Okay. All right. Let's go back to the back to the video. I lied again. I why don't I remember to do this all in one clip? <laughs> I would like to show two wonderful art pieces. Look at them. Aren't they so gorgeous? Aren't they so pretty? <laughs> if you would like to show me anything at all, an art doll you made, some fan art you made, just anything you've made at all that you would like to share with me, please use the hashtag KP tutorials so that I can see it. Okay? Okay, okay, now back to the video. <laughs> Once the body is built up, it is now time to add fabric over it. Now, I'm doing this a little bit different than how I normally do. Normally, I'll just cut a piece of fur the entire length of the doll, and then I'll cut slits where I want the legs to slide through, and then I'll sew down the middle of that, which is a very quickly run down version. Um, but because I want a different belly color, what I'm doing is I'm still cutting the length of the doll and the two fabrics, but I'm kind of making them a lot shorter than they would be if it was to wrap around the entire doll because I only want the brown dark brown to stop at the belly and then, then I want the lighter brown to be you know for the belly so I'm just making sure that they're short enough 
it's just so hard to explain y'all <laughs> so hard to explain what I'm doing. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I'm just, I cut two pieces of fabric together and I'm sewing them down a line. I, sewing, I just, I really should take a, a class on sewing and just to explain it better because I'm just like, look, guys, I took this fabric and I took this fabric and then I took needle and thread and I don't know how it happened, but suddenly it's sewn. I don't know how I got here. He doesn't know how he got here, but we got here. <laughs> I think I think going forward, I'm actually just gonna like start linking sewing down below because I just, I'm so bad at explaining it. Like I listen back to what I say and I'm just like, who, who would understand you? I don't understand you. What are you even saying? Cut a fabric and then just sew straight down the middle? Well, how did you get to down the middle? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I got there either. I just got there. <laughs> I'm just ramping now. How are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, look, it's my dog. <laughs> Why is my dog in the video? <laughs> this is chaos. This video is just chaos. I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs>Okay, but I can I can explain the legs correctly. <laughs> so what I do for the legs is I take a piece of fabric the entire length of the leg and then I'll trim it around the leg so that it's nice and snug, but that it, it'll still leave a little bit of room for posability because I don't want it too tight to where it's really stiff and the wire or ball and sockets won't be able to move. So that's something you want to keep in mind. You want it snug around but not so tight that nothing's going to be able to move and then i'll just start sewing from the feet first working my way up towards the body with a basic stitch i don't know what this stitch is called i just call it a basic stitch it's just a back and forth stitch and the only stitch i do know is the ladder stitch and i use that to join the body and leg fabrics together to make sure that they're really tight and the seams are hidden underneath the fur so it's a lot more seamless than if i had just done a normal stitch After that, it is now time to trim up the body. Now normally this is when you'll see me using a pet shaver, uh, but since I wanted most of the fur to actually stay on the doll, I'm ending up just going in with scissors, which is good because I know not everybody has access to a pet shaver or can get one and only have scissors, so this is me showing you that it's totally possible with scissors. Um, I'm shaping the leg, making sure that I'm taking in only little, little cuts at a time because it's a lot easier to just go back and trim it than it would be if you trim too far you can't really add it back and trust me you really don't want to have to re-sew it because you took too much off <laughs> so just go nice and slow and be very methodical and sure about where you're cutting now i want to make sure that i have the ankles and knees and elbows really prominent but since he's going to be a chunk 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 boy i'm i want that i want that thick thigh and them chunky arms like a bear so I was really going for um, that look with him and I just think it turned out so fluffy and cute you guys I, I love this piece so much I love this little chunker that I made and I want to make just a bajillion of them now <laughs> I just want a chunk army <laughs> hashtag chunk army <laughs> oh gosh but yeah that's what I'm doing and here you can see the difference of trimmed versus not trimmed it just taking the time to do that really makes all the difference and just levels it up a little bit more than if you had just leaned it untrimmed at all even just like a little light just a little little bit little bit of snips here and there can really make a difference so but i also recommend a pet shaver especially going to be doing this a lot uh pet shaver if you want to get like most of the fur off like if it's too long it just helps to get that fur all off very quickly, very smoothly, and a lot more even than if you would have done it with scissors. Because even scissors, sometimes you make a miscut or a jagged edge and you have to go back and even that back out, which takes more fur off than you want. So a pet shaver will just make sure that it's already nice and smooth from the get-go. But they can't get legs this sharp, so you're always going to have to go back in with scissors. So, yeah. I think I'm just talking constantly i'm just like i just i'm just gonna keep talking music and back in my video we don't know her we're just gonna talk <laughs> uh my roommate sarah's gonna edit this video and i know she's just gonna have a field day with everything i'm saying
As I mentioned earlier in this video, I'm going to be fixing the little nick in the print with epoxy sculpt. Now, I have gloves this time, <laughs> and I'm going to be wearing gloves going forward, because even though you should be wearing gloves um, while you're mixing it, and I'm still not sure if gloves matter or not when it's mixed, like, I don't know if it's like soap, where lye is like really toxic, but once it's mixed with oils and it's saponified, then it's safe for use. I don't know if epoxy is the same way, but either way, it's just better to be safe than sorry. So I'm just going to be wearing gloves from now on. And I recommend that you wear gloves and always read the safety precautions of anything you're using, be it a Dremel with a dust mask, be it um, resin with gloves and, and like a vapor protector mask thing. Just be safe is what I'm trying to get at. Okay. <laughs> I don't want you guys to have reactions of anything. I want you to be safe so you can do a bunch of arts. Also, I'm adding these little spikes on top of the head so that I can add his ear tufts later on with faux fur. Now, with painting, I do want to do just a rough base layer. Now, most of this is going to be covered in faux fur. Like, all the edges are going to be covered in faux fur and the ear tufts are going to be covered in faux fur just to make it blend more nicely and not have such a harsh edge. But I still want to make sure I paint that just to make sure that if I miss any bits, if I don't cover it all in fur, instead of the gray showing, it'll be the color that matches closely with the fur color. Now, for his face, I did want a light colored face. I don't think he really like embodies any specific owls. I think it's more just like g g general owl vibes. Um, I think the original like D&D owlbear is based off a great horned owl. But this good little guy, I just wanted him to be whatever I wanted him to be. But I just wanted him to have owl vibes. But I wanted a very light face to contrast against all his dark body. Which I think turned out really nice because his face just really, really, really pops. And also, you just can't forget the little toes. Okay, so we're painting the toes dark brown as well. But I do eventually go back in and paint them black. Because I'm going to end up tinting his legs to have a little bit of a nicer gradient. So, you see me doing brown here, but just... Don't be shocked if they end up darker later on. Now lately I have been using pastels to add just like very subtle shading around the whatever piece I'm making. I did it for the unicorn. I've done it um, for a few different art dolls and I just really like it because I knew I wasn't going to be able to shade it how I wanted it with just acrylic paint. I knew it would end up either being just too like stark contrast between the two colors so with using pastels it's a lot um, more subtle it's more of a gradient shade and it just turned out really really nice I really like how it ended up on this little guy's face it just like I put it all on the crevices and stuff and it just really like the shading I just I don't know guys it looked really really good so if you have any piece you're working on and you want to do subtle shading and you happen to have pastels really go for it because it just mm. It looks so nice. It looks so way better than if I would have tried to use paints. So I may or may not have borrowed uh, my roommate's fancy detail brushes and oh my god do they make a difference. Me painting the eyes, it just, it was so much easier than if I would have used any of the normal bigger brushes that I use. Why have I not learned to use detail brushes? Where have I been? Why did no one tell me? I mean, I still held my breath the entire time because I'm so terrified of mist stroking and like just streaking black everywhere on the wonderful pastel face I just did. So I still wasn't breathing, but <laughs> it just, detail brushes, man. Where, where have I been? Detail brushes. Um, for his eyes, I did want, I, I thought about different eye colors. I almost did green, but then I thought just go, keep it natural. You don't really do natural stuff often, Karen, so just keep it natural. So I did more amber colored eyes and I just, I love how that turned out. I, I really like how, I just don't do it enough. I don't do natural stuff and I should because it just, I just imagine this little creature in the woods hopping around. Like, tell me that doesn't sound cute. <laughs> And the, the detail brushes really help to get different shades of yellows and oranges in the eyes. And it just, mm, mm, is my phrase this video. Mm, 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 mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> 
I did want a little bit more of a barrier between the fur and the sculpted face so you can see here I'm actually darkening the edges just to add a little bit more contrast and variation since I'm only using a couple colors I'm just making sure I use gradients of those colors so that it looks like there's more going on than there actually is and to varnish I am using Liquitex high gloss varnish which just so satisfying oh it's so satisfying I love I love when I get to gloss the eyes I just it just makes it so reflective and just it brings everything and it looks so pretty and I, if I could just varnish eyes for the rest of my life I'd be happy <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, here I am tinting the legs and the feet just a little bit darker just because uh, gradients in nature are really common, especially like having darker legs. So I'm just making sure I'm adding that in. And again, it just adds a little bit more variation since I'm not using that many colors. Now, so far this owl bear is a lot more bear than it is owl, so to add a little bit more um, owl features back in, I'm going to be adding feathers to the back of the arms and to the tail. I don't know if they'd actually be usable, I don't, maybe he could glide around, but he's so chunk chunk, I think he would just flap and fall. <laughs> but I still want to give that look that he has more owl features in him. So I made a little quick template and I cut it to size to make sure it matched the arm and tail and then I'm just cutting felt um, in the shape of feathers and just making sure that they match the template I made and then I'm going to make sure I overlap them when I glue them together that way it's a lot more layered effect and they look like they um, lay more correctly. <laughs> You'll notice that the felt feathers are white and we need them brown so I'm going to be taking watered down acrylics and I'm just going to soak the felt feathers in it and I want it to be really really saturated so that I know when it dries it's still going to retain the color and it's going to seep to the other side and make sure that both sides are saturated now I don't know where blue glitter decided to join the party uh, I haven't used blue glitter for anything um, I don't know where it came from, but Blue Glitter was just like, you know what, this is my video too. So, we're just gonna let it have its moment, but I do remove it later. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where it came from. Now, just a heads up, when you do this, please be prepared to wait a while for this to dry. Unless you have like a heat gun or some other method, if you just leave it on a fan or something, because it took pretty much a day for it to dry for me so just just be aware that it, it's gonna take a while to dry but hopefully the result ends up looking good again just to make sure that the feathers didn't stay one start color I am dipping in a little bit of dark brown it almost looks black on on camera but I'm just fading that at the tips and that is something very easy to do since this is already really soaked. The dark color just kind of bleeds into the felt feathers and so it gives them a really nice fade and gradient. But again, I'm just doing this to make sure it's giving a lot of uh, a bit more visual interest and to look a little bit more like feathers. And then the last step is to just sew them in place. Um, I hope I'm in frame this time. I think. I think I was mostly in frame for this this part so all I'm doing is just taking the felt and sewing it back and forth into the arm and tail of the owl bear. Now I, I, I will admit I was a little conflicted because I gave him like a little nub tail and I was vibing with the nub tail for a while but I think at the end of the day the tail feathers just added a lot more um, 
variation in how he looked and it just really sold uh, that these are two creatures being mixed together so i think it was really important even though i loved the nub i loved the nub and we will remember the nub but the nub needed to have wings so that he may attempt to flap flap <laughs> i'm a mess but after that this video is dead and it is now time for a montage so thank you guys so much for being here So much for making it to the end of this video i hope you like the end result of the owlbear as much as i do um i would like to give a quick shout out to my patrons thank you so much for your support every single month it just it helps me so much you guys do more than i ever could say that you do i just i could just say thank you thank you multiple times thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you <laughs> Um, the next video, I'm going to preemptively say might, instead of two weeks, it might be three weeks because I do want to do a more epic piece. I've been doing, um, I, I wouldn't say like Okami and, and everything else wasn't epic or anything, but I just, I want to take time for like a bigger project. So it's probably going to take a little bit longer to do the video, but I hope that the end result will be worth it. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I love you. Shush. Listen, listen, people. I'm not feeling that great, but we're like we're doing we're doing a thing anyway. Sarah really wants me to put this bit into the video, so or she wants me to be like, should it go here, or should it go here on the nubby tail, or should it go here, or should it go here? I don't know. Look at that tush. I don't know what to do with that booty. I don't know. Where does it go? Who knows? <laughs> I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I had a little bit more subtext to what I wanted you to do. I don't know uh, what you want. It's it's the just, whole bit I planned out. This is going at the end of the video for bloopers. <laughs> saying this was the hardest decision of your career. Because oh, booty wait, wait, wait. Perfect. Shh, shh. The booty is so divine. Oh. I'm having such a meltdown on where it should go because I don't want to take away from that that butt. The 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 nub or, or the or the the nub nubs. <laughs> God, this video is a mess. <laughs> so dead inside. So I don't. I'm so tired, y'all. <laughs> but the booty bring back the life, right? Okay, but uh, spoiler alert. We're putting it here. Oh come on. <laughs>